Okay. So, so for the first question is, is this common point analogy? Yes. Okay. So because it's very, very rare to present for the first time at the age of 10 years, normally you present in the first six months of life, one year or two years of life. In fact, by the time you're five years of age, the majority of children with common point analogy has resolved. Uh, maybe about 1%, 2% are still there, right? So the first thing is to do an allergy test, okay? Is this IgE-mediated, not IgE-mediated? Does he have eosinophilic esophagitis? Does he have any other GI disease causing the symptoms? Does he have eczema, which is not food allergy related? Okay, because not only having eczema or respiratory symptoms means you have allergy. It could be because you have a topic child or a topic person, they have other disease as well. Now, once I verified the diagnosis, the answer to your question is no in my opinion, because at the time you are 10 years of age, you don't need milk protein. You're taking protein from other sources adequately. In fact, not only at 10, even at two years of age, children who have a mixed diet, who are able to take normal diet apart from cow milk protein, do not require much supplementation. And they can take other formula, which is not cow milk protein formula, just as a source of protein as well. There could be vegetarian formula, there could be other sources of protein. So I would not recommend it because you don't need it. Unless you talk about a child who has short gut syndrome or a child who has physical disability, they're not able to chew on food or eat food. Maybe the child who has a G tube. Maybe it's a child who has multiple GI surgery and short gut syndrome. In that case, I would. But as a requirement, because you don't need that kind of protein if you're able to eat a mixed diet, it is not recommended with a question mark regarding the diagnosis at that age. Yes. Thank you, doctor. And uh, again, as you mentioned, doctor, the, the cow's, milk, cow's milk allergy, as you mentioned, was in six months, one year, and two years. And at this point, we need to move uh, forward uh, to another question. There are two ways of the, for diagnosis by elimination phase. First one, to provide amino acid-based formula for two to four weeks. And the second one, to provide EHF for four weeks. If it doesn't improve, then we will go to amino acid-based formula. From your respect experience, which way do you think is better? Uh, again, again, it's it's a very it's very spe specific question that you only divide and base on the current condition of the patient. Uh, the age of the patient is important. Whether the child is breastfeeding or bottle feeding is important. Are they able to eat food or not? Otherwise, is important. How severe is their symptoms? Do they have a lot of severe eczema? Do they have failure to thrive? Is important. So, in order to make it kind of easier. I think if you need a fast solution, a fast solution is to immediately switch to an elemental formula, okay? Because that will give you the fastest answer, the fastest time with no wasting, especially in a condition yes. where a child where you have is failing to thrive, has severe eczema, or has a, a blood in the stool that's not resolving. Maybe the child is into the area where they have to feed, okay, and they're not able to feed, okay? or in a condition where the mother is only breastfeeding and she cannot do an elimination diet because in that case, yes. the elimination is for the mother, not for the child. And when you do elimination for the mother, the breastfeeding becomes less and less and less. And it's very, very stressful for the mother as well. So that will be the simple answer. If you have a milder case where you have time and the child is not severely affected and not dependent on breastfeeding, you can afford to go on elimination diet gradually and take your time. In cases where you have eosinophilic esophagitis and they are older children, uh, it's difficult for you to put them on pure elemental diet. If they are younger, yeah. it's easier. But if they are older, it's difficult. So in those cases, because it's very important, in addition to doing patch testing and skin testing, allergy testing, they may go on elimination diet gradually because they're older and they can do an elimination diet better this way. So it depends on the case, on the age, on severity as well.
Thank you, doctor. And uh, as you mentioned, that the quality of life also is part of our way of diagnosis and how to diagnose and how to build our uh, diagnosis story. So each individual uh, case, each individual case yes. uh, sorry to interrupt you. It, these are questions which are based on each patient individually. The social yes. circumstances, the severity of the condition, the age of the patient, it's, it's not an answer you can give for everyone. It's, it's, not, yeah. it's a, not a master key. It's not a master yes. key. You have to make a key for <laughs> the people, okay? Yes, as uh, we can say it by simple, understand your patient and act based on your patient situation. So uh, thank you again, for uh, doctor, for the great answer. I think we have uh, another five minutes until the end of our session. So we have time for uh, two more questions. Uh, so uh, I think we need to look to the future. So uh, doctor, what will be the future for cow's milk allergy diagnosis? Right. In the coming years. Right. Um, I, I wish, you know, and it's, it's a wishful thinking that to get a better tool for diagnosis. Uh, at this time, pardon me, in addition to having skin prick testing uh, for serum I, for uh, IgE, uh, patch testing, serum IgE as well, the clinical diagnosis remains the best tool. We have other options of doing, for example, uh, basophil activation testing, which is useful when you, do, when you mark your basophils for the antibodies, it's useful to know when to give a challenge, but not to diagnose. So if I have a child who's diagnosed with chamopathy allergy, and I want to tell, okay, when do I challenge this child? Uh, normally with non-IgE mediated milk allergy, I would challenge them around one year of age because testing is not relevant. But for IgE mediated disease, you have to do testing, make sure the numbers are getting lower. Okay, for six months, yeah. there's no symptoms. In that case, a basal activation test is useful uh, because the challenge could be life-threatening sometimes. Um, we don't have any better tools. There are many things which are inaccurate. So IgG testing, irrelevant to common protein allergy or food allergy. Uh, 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 testing of the colors of the iris and, and, and so on. Testing of the hair, testing of the urine, testing of the saliva, okay? Uh, testing of the infrared and ultraviolet radiation. There's so many yes. inaccurate and independable and not respected testing in the world. Our best hope at this time, in fact, is thinking about prevention because they have, we have a lot of questions and a lot of potential for prevention of allergy that's been associated with diet, diet prebiotics, probiotics, and so on, uh, and reduction of other items into our diet or into medication. So the best chance I think in the future will come as prevention rather than a more accurate testing. Yes, uh, thank you, Doctor, again for, for another uh, answer. So I think we have time for another and last question. Uh, yes, we have a question mainly related to the celiac disease. And uh, in the developing countries, there is a, a lot of indications and a lot of cases for the celiac disease. So uh, can we use amino acid-based formula or extensive hydrolyzed, uh, extensive hydrolyzed formula recommended for the treatment of celiac disease or not? Um, now, celiac disease is not an allergy. It's not a wheat allergy. Um, the, the problem with celiac disease, it's an autoimmune disease. Uh, and you get a um, hypersensitivity reaction, which is type three reaction, usually, uh, sorry, type two reactions and T cell reactions, which are related to the gluten component of the food. Now, gluten is based from wheat, barley, oats, that's where gluten comes from. But any factory that produces those items cannot claim to have gluten-free diet. So it, come in, it can come into rice if it's in the same factory, come into like uh, sweets, it can come into many things because gluten is used in a lot of bakeries. Uh, it's not a, a question for the allergist as more, more a question for the gastroenterologist. My area is looking into wheat allergy and that's not gluten allergy. That's IgE allergy towards the whole wheat protein while gluten is just one small part of the wheat protein. So that's a different diagnosis. Do I need elemental or do I need amino acid formula for celiac disease? We don't need it because regular, form, regular milk and formula is not gluten containing. So the problem with celiac disease is gluten. 
So dairy products, fruits and vegetables, meats and chickens do not contain gluten unless they are produced in a factory where there is processing of oats, barley, and wheat. So generally speaking, no. Another thing is that celiac disease is not diagnosed in the young age. You need at least six months of wheat ingestion to develop celiac disease. So normally when children start to take a diet of wheat containing products, it's usually around four to six months. It's very rare to develop celiac disease unless you're about two years, three years, and usually it's in the adults more than it is in children. So in fact, many of those patients present with low vitamin D and low iron, not responding to medication. And that's yes. the only symptom they have. They don't have eczema, don't have rashes as much, don't have failure to thrive. They have some diarrhea, some constipation maybe, uh, but uh, that's the symptom. So no, the answer is no. Okay, thank you, doctor. I think we, we can proceed with another one question for one minute. It's a very, very fast question. And I think we already uh, went through it, but uh, uh, it's repeated for a lot of time. So maybe some attendees joined us uh, uh, late. Uh, sometimes we introduce certain type food, uh, people start severe vomiting only without any other dermatological or respiratory system. Can we consider it as an allergy to this food? And he mentioned that vomiting starts immediately after introduction. Is it considered IgE mediated or not? Right, so that's a good question as well. The answer is yes, because IgE-mediated allergy can present with only sneezing, with only cough, with only vomiting, and never develop anaphylaxis. You can have a single symptom, and I've had many cases where they present only sneezing, nothing else, no urticaria, no rashes, no failure to thrive, no vomiting, no respiratory distress, only sneezing. Some of them only cough and definitely some of them only vomiting. So if you have only vomiting, only diarrhea, whatever symptom, it can be IgE mediated, especially if it's recurrent, especially if you rule yeah. out other components. So it's not a consistency. It's not too thick, it's not too light. Maybe the child's not ready for food now. You know, so you have to be sure there's no other components. But if the food results in an immediate symptom, this could be IgE disease, even though it could be just a single isolated symptom. And even not only IgE, for food-induced protein uh, enteropathy, like it happened with rice and oats, the child would eat rice, immediately develop vomiting and diarrhea and dehydration, and they go to the emergency department, they think it's gastroenteritis. It's not IgE disease, but it's immediate. So the fact that you have an immediate symptom that's repeated with the same food should bring you to your attention a question of allergy. Yes, uh, I think the time is now done.